almost there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Don't call me white girl. That's a real it's day shit. It's Unpopular opinion. Jail's not that bad. Boom. Pop your shit open and grab that nigga by the head and get the... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's something about them whispering in my ear the whole name thing. I like that. I like a nigga to whisper. What's your cash? <laughs> that's what's different. And that's why, statistically, number-wise, not only do we not get the same amount of riches as them, we do not keep it. No mm -hmm. idea how long they keep it. Hey, welcome to the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast. Are you up? You okay up there? Did I make you laugh? <laughs> OMG! <laughs> welcome to the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast. I'm here with my best buddy, Phelps. Yo. Shit got kind of crazy with Phelps yesterday. I started to, you know, what? pull out a weapon and hurt somebody. What? I, didn't. I ain't gonna lie. You... It got kind of crazy this morning, too, when I, when I turned to you and asked you, uh, Oh, you think you do da da da? You like, yeah, bitch, I do. <laughs> Got a little tight, a little crazy. You um, you you up on the scoreboard with that though, bro? Th that's listen. <laughs> I had a bitch hit me in the DM and say, "Excuse my nails. My nails haven't been done for weeks, um, but it's freedom in it. I could do anything. I could dig up my nose. I can pull my spanks up. I could tie my shoe. Yeah. I can chop stuff. I might not ever go back. I could I teach you how to roll up." I feel like a man. Words you teach me how to roll now. Yeah. I feel like a man wrist down. <laughs> Shout out to you girls that get jail manicures. You bunch of men. No shit. Anyway, I'm very thirsty this episode. Please bear with me. Um. Anyway, shout out to my pigtails. Shout out to Phelps Durag. Yeah. A girl DM me, and it, it was manic, chaotic. Paragraph after paragraph every second. I know you're watching this and you're getting tingly thinking I'm going to say your name, but I forgot it. No shade. We don't drop names on here, though. She was like, no, she would want it. I need help. I need therapy. I need this. I need that. I'd rather just talk to a real bitch like you. I was like, hey, get on better help. Can't help you. You know? Uh -huh. And um, she literally said, I love you and Phelps Bond, and I want to mimic that with my baby father. I said, me and Phelps don't have a kid. <laughs> Are you stupid? Of course our bond is different. Everything that complicates relationships, me and Phelps don't do. That's why it's great. The moment that we fucking once a week <laughs> and niggas is pregnant and sharing bills, that's the moment you see motherfuckers in here. <laughs> well, if you would have closed the drawer this morning. That's when yeah, the drama, all, that's when the podcast yeah, split and it makes to the blogs. Yeah. All, all our shit is real, like, surface level petty. It's, like, easy to bounce back from. That's when Phelps get the solo podcast where he's screaming in the camera on YouTube. <laughs> talking <laughs> but, about how he been treated like shit for a year. Nah. Not the podcast he's doing with his bestie, which is also my bestie, Quaddy. <laughs> Not that. Nah. But the Jaded podcast when people break up. It's so crazy. <laughs> Listen, B. Simone had a podcast with her best friend. B. Simone podcast is off. And I think the friendship is like fucked up behind it. Word. Bro, I can recall. So her and the girl don't sit on the couch with blankets and pray no more? Bro, damn! I can recall when their podcast coming out, right? Being so impressed by the rollout of it, her merch, everything, and I ain't gonna front. I'm a real nigga. Feelings of jealousy are normal. A lot of people wouldn't say this on no camera. Mm -hmm. That shit had my face red. Like, damn. The first thing I think of, damn, if I had support, if I had a partner this way, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, she got all this or whatever. But that's why you don't. Eat shit yeah you know what i mean that's why you don't want for shit or want what you see on the other side because you never know listen i fuck with b simone i'm a fan of hers i think she a fan of mine's no shade but i'm just saying as a fellow podcaster looking at it you know i was like damn i mean her merch was so good it looked like clothes it like a clothing line like a regular mm -hmm. clothing line like you would just wear that fuck support of the podcast you would just mm -hmm. wear it and their episodes was going viral from the gate. These yeah. niggas crying about abortions and shit, holding hands and praying. Mm -hmm. They had Krishan on the joint. They put that bitch, that blessed in holy water and yeah. shit. On forehead and shit. That shit sizzled. It steamed. And then they all held hands and prayed on her. And she laid on the ground and shook. Green stomach, green throw up came out. Like the <laughs> exorcism on Krishan. <laughs> they ordained pastors, them girls. But look, you feel me? And then boom, you know? <laughs> it's just annoying that y'all keep asking because she's so much younger than me. They keep asking me to have Meatball on the podcast. Meatball is, I feel like I'm talking to my daughter. 
She grown, but I'm older. I'm way older yeah. than Meepo. I can't sit <clears throat> with Meepo and have an hour conversation. You know what's going to turn into? Don't get pregnant. Don't yeah. let them niggas run yeah. you around. Make sure nobody want to hear that advice shit. Mm -hmm. I'm here to talk to the old horse. Nah. You know? Yeah, what was that? Huh? But I heard something from over there where Zach's at. And I think people got to understand is like most of the people that you could sit up here with is like you could talk to them that long in real per in real in real person in real life. Like you know what I mean? It's like sometimes it's like motherfucker. I don't even know if I could talk to you for ten minutes in real life. How you gonna sit on this camera for? Her? She's too young. She's too young. I had the youngest person I had on the podcast was um, baby girl from TikTok. K or and it was a short jaw. Yeah, went by quick. I'm trying to think who else age wise. Yeah, my fucking two thousand kids, boy. They one word answers. How you doing? Yeah. Good. How's TikTok? Great. <laughs> Then that motherfucker got up and rapped for 20 minutes. Jesus Christ, she rapping. Lord, the girl rapping. I said, oh, Lord. Is that the human she had on all the Vin. He had to tell. Designer had a $6,000 outfit on. Motherfucker said six words. <laughs> Shout out to the 2,000 babies. Are they 2,000? But yeah, they the 2,000. But they're not even the 90 babies. They the 2,000 babies. Motherfucker's 21. Yeah, it's 2023, so yeah. And they getting money. They drive Hellcats. Jesus. Um, There's a couple of things I want to talk about. They're mad at Queen B. Everybody went out to see Renaissance. They're mad at Queen B because Queen B dropped Renaissance in, in um, that place. In Israel. Was it Israel or was it Palestine? I'm confused now. No, it was Israel. Whatever. She dropped the, uh, the, the movie where she could have not dropped it. Her not dropping it. Her influence is so huge. Her not dropping that movie could have said a lot to a lot of people. Honestly, anybody during this whole Palestine thing, this because it's been going on forever, but since this direct and I'm just going over there killing babies every single day, um, just genocide and I'm trying to get rid of Muslims just openly in front of me. We just want to get rid of all the Muslims because we feel like they're filth and they're beneath us. Some of these stars that haven't said anything, it's just like, damn, it makes me look at y'all funny, especially people like DJ Khaled, who's Palestinian. You yeah. know, Drake is Jewish. Like, say something, nigga. I call Dave Mays. <laughs> it's the only Jewish nigga I know. Do you do you think? And I said, um, "What you think?" And he told me. Do you think um, everybody um, in a position of power is responsible to be like privy to politics? No, I don't think that at all. But this is not politics. This okay. is beyond. You know, I feel like either you are super ignorant and you're choosing to be super ignorant on what's going on. Or you just plain don't care, which makes you a demon. They, I'm going to explain it again and again and again and again until I'm blue in the face. The conditions in Gaza and Palestine and all that was already so fucked up that the life expectancy is very short. Niggas making it to 35, 40. Mm -hmm. So majority over there is children, women mm -hmm. and children. So while they're bombing these people, they are knowingly bombing women and children. I have watched. I've, I've never seen this many dead babies in my life. Yeah. I follow activists. One of the activists I follow from over there, she gets online another day and like, look, I'll probably be dead by tomorrow, but I want y'all to know this, 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 and this. But mm -hmm. it's that real. The yeah. journalist's like, yo, we probably can't make it. We run out of space. They tell them to go to point A and you'll be cool. Then they blind point A. You go to the hospital, they bomb the hospital. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's not like because I'm Muslim by faith or um, Lord knows, I gotta shake the table sometimes. Foreign Muslims not even that friendly to black Muslims. Yeah. But I bop. You yeah. go to the masjid with them, they won't even stand, put their foot next to you, stand in the sujid to pray. That's just the truth. It has nothing to do with that. It's just wrong. It don't matter what color they're they kids. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom, bro. Yeah. I'm looking at my babies and then I see dead babies under uh, boulders and rocks. That shit is crazy. Mm -hmm. And especially when the fact that America is supporting that war. So the first images I was seeing that was just being pushed to me was like, you know, that people in Israel were really being hurt and attacked. And, and yes, you know, things that happened to them, but it's, it's nowhere near what's happening to the people on the other side. This is extreme. This is bullying. Mm -hmm. This is putting your foot on a nigga's head. Yeah. This when you drop a nigga, you stomp him and he's sleep and you still stomping him in his face. That's yeah. what's going on over there. And motherfuckers is not saying nothing. You're creeps. You're disgusting. We're going to scream free Palestine. That's what we're doing here. Don't call me white girl. Um, podcast. That's how you heal. Free Palestine and free Young Thug. A couple of you bitches was on my DM saying, oh, this don't make sense about court. Can you break it down? Can you break it down? Sure, I'll break it down. They ain't got a fucking case, so they making shit up. Prosecutor in there rapping like a Showtime <laughs> at the Apollo. Sit your dry face ass down, bitch. 
That was the worst rendition of Take It to Trial I've ever seen in my life. You know the Take It to Trial lyrics are on trial. Uh-oh. They are rapping his song Take It to Trial at his trial. <laughs> Where are we? Imagine if they brung me to court for some of the jokes I told. Everybody in this motherfucker going to jail. Even the new lady. <laughs> you seen um, ever since Young Thug uh, said what he said about his name, everybody dropping acronyms to Oh, my shit. God. The Coke Boys. You hear what the Coke Boys? <laughs> the uh, the something of kings. What is it? Creation, Creation of, of kings. kings everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you good. You hired. This woman is good back here. This woman like Catwoman. It's shit falling down here, babe. Yo, literally, I'm sitting there looking, and I look up, and I just see this big shit coming down. Sidebar. Sidebar, everybody in here feels like free Palestine, correct? Yeah, 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 1,000%. We not like, okay, everybody's up. Everybody woke. All right. I put free Palestine on my TikTok and on my Instagram. They gave me a ticket for bullying and harassment. This is America, baby. Mm. Yeah, it's sick. Sick. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, but Thug's trial is bullshit. He gained the weight. He's super in love with Mariah the Scientist. I guess that's great. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hope for my day in life, but I feel like me and Thug would have been a great match. I would have let him sleep with whoever he wanted to. Yeah, you've been, you been a little chicken. antsy lately. You all right? I don't like it. <laughs> you know the other day I got horny I thought I was sick I almost took emergency room <laughs> My coochie said I was like what the fuck I thought I had a seizure Down below I was like what the fuck And then like softly Through my sweat pants I said what the fuck to you bitch It was Tabby <laughs> My vagina My vagina's name Tabitha if anybody don't know. Remember that guy was firm with me and he would say, what's up with Tabby? Yeah. What happened to him? He was rich and successful. Got tired of playing with me. I said, you can come get this plane and come in here at six and get fucked. And he was bullshit. He ain't had time. He just moved on. Right, big dog. It's a lot of bad bitches in his, in his hot tub, in his pool and shit. He ain't tired of keep swooning me. I already told you I liked you, bitch. I told you twice. That's where I draw the line. Okay. Whatever. I'm, I'm almost there. Um... Yeah, but Thug's trial is it is a joke. It is a joke. Thug's trial is a joke. I really hope he beats it. I think they don't have a case. Have they have they been bringing up any hard evidence yet? Or are they still just all just At, shit that done, done happened and then we tying it to the Thug's rap lyrics? A 40-year-old black woman with great skin and a bad weave is rapping Thug's lyrics with no oomph, not rhyming it. Literally just take it to trial. Fuck the laws. In the ops, take it to trial. YSL, big slime, take it to trial. I wouldn't be able to sit in that motherfucker. Like I would be, like my head would pop off. This is stupid. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's just dumb. They don't. Have, I don't think they have a case. I don't care. And you ATLians, they get mad when I scream free thug, free thug. <laughs> Cause I don't want to hear that shit. I think it's bullshit. I think it's a trumped up bullshit ass case. And I do like the fact that that little girl. With that little head going down there to see him, and at every court date, that's <laughs> admirable, Mariah. Did you even go to school for science? <laughs> <laughs> like who calls themselves a scientist if they're not a scientist? Whatever. Um, I got a couple complaints about stuff. I keep running into these white people that have like this ghetto girl aesthetic. I ran into a seven hundred pound white man. <laughs> In a hospital, doing the whole like, yeah, and bitch, you can get on out of here, bitch. If you don't like what I'm saying, get off my page. And I just was like, yo, what what are you mimicking? Like, yeah. what is this? Is this a black person? Yeah. These motherfuckers do this on social media and get these huge followings. I always like Landon. I don't know if a lot of y'all know Landon Ramon. I always liked him. And we always say things about him like that. I would be like, because when you like something, you kind of. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm catching so many white guys do it, and it's it's a lot of white gay males doing it, or white trans women that are doing it, and it's like, bitch, that's not what we all about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's like you popping all this shit, 
you know. If you haven't finished your holiday shopping yet, don't panic. There's still time to find incredible original gifts with the help of Uncommon Goods. UncommonGoods.com has the absolute best gifts for everybody in your life. We're talking moms, dads, teens, in-laws, besties, cousins, and your one and only. And it's not stuff you can find just anywhere. That's what makes it so cool. Uncommon Goods has unique and creative gifts, often handmade by independent artists and makers. So skip the gifts that scream last minute and find something truly original at UncommonGoods.com. Here are some of my favorite things from their site for the holiday season. Mitten candles, customized snowflake ornaments with your name in it, hidden pocket scrunchies. Now, those aren't just for the holiday season. I need places to hide my money. (laughs) And plenty, plenty more, guys. So from art, jewelry, to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everybody. Not that same lackluster gift that you got last year that you could find anywhere. To get 15% off off your next gift, go to UncommonGoods.com slash DCWMG. That's UncommonGoods.com slash DCMWG for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer uncommon goods check them out today they all out the ordinary baby if somebody punch you in the face would you fight them back because that's we do that too if you're gonna go there yeah. you know what i mean like if you're gonna go to whole ghetto girl aesthetic you know you're gonna spit the razor out and slice a bitch yeah no i don't like it it's offensive to me as a black person, and I don't like it. And I'm tired of when I step to people online, y'all write back, you got the nerve. I am black. And I'm tired of explaining it. You know how they do the Facebook post from back in the day and they embarrass you? I swear to God, I just found a Facebook post of mine from 2009. And I say, I'm tired of the white jokes. Let me find it. It was so aggressive and violent. This must be back when you could threaten motherfuckers on social media and not have no trouble. Because it was too much bass in my voice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can find it. But it was, wasn't embarrassing to me. The in. most embarrassing drawings I had, I'll say stuff like, wipe me down, cuz, blank, blank, blank. I'm on. Get it? I'm fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I knew I told Facebook I was fucked up twice a week. <laughs> um, Let me see. Facebook is such a fun place. I don't even know what that motherfucker look like. What? I ain't been on Facebook since 2000. Facebook is wild, but it is some money on this motherfucker. Literally. But this marketplace. What year is it? I always hated white jokes. I'm ready to start teeing off on you dirty ass bitch. Hashtag light skin bitch struggles. I said that December the 2nd, 2009. Somebody on Twitter told me to take a bath in my light skin tears. You're not allowed to be light skinned really now. Nope. Oh, I'll be light skinned and complain, I, light skinned and talk loud. Listen, we always had a conversation about colorism, right? And as all y'all know at home, I changed my stance on colorism. I used to walk around and say very stupid things about colorism. For example, I would say, Colorism is real And I love being a black person I love my black sisters and brothers And I know in this country Physically the darker you are The harder you have it But that doesn't exclude How I dealt with colorism in my life People would try to bully me all the time That's stupid Because Mm -hmm. colorism only affects people With darker skin Mm -hmm. (laughs) It never happened right So yes was I bullied Yes Was I harassed Yes But I didn't experience colorism It's Mm -hmm. not the same So once I had that epiphany I've been yelling it to the mountaintops, you know, because I want people to know that I know what I'm talking about. Listen, half of the battle here for me is to make y'all laugh, but I want to tell you everything I know. That's just like a bitch I am, period. I'm the friend, you say the word wrong, and I'm like, bro, that's how you pronounce it. Because in my mind, I don't want you to go to another room pronouncing things that way and have anybody in that room think you stupid because I know how smart you are, how much potential you have, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's just been me. I watch a documentary, I come home telling y'all about turtles. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's just who I am. So, of course, I'm like that with y'all because I love y'all. I feel connected to y'all, especially these motherfuckers that have been supporting me for years. Some of y'all, same people that are watching my podcast are the same people that told me to get into podcasting. That's mm-hmm. deep, baby. We on this ride together. I don't even keep a nigga past three years. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've been doing this since 2018. We done passed all my niggas. All my <laughs> niggas. I think the longest nigga I had, like, consecutively was Rashad's father. 
And he yeah, also just called me and said, Demona, stop talking about me on that podcast. People in my job talking about it. Stop telling my baby dad what I say about him on this podcast because we are getting along. We've been getting along very well these last couple years. So my second, I'm the second longest. What, relationship? relationship? No, babe. Well, like consecutive? Yeah. Um, It's been three years almost. It's almost three years. You close, bro. Like, <laughs> honestly, because... I was with Rashad Father from, mind you, me and Rashad Father had crushes on each other in high school. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember you told me that, yeah, and yeah. And we would see each other, like, sometimes he would throw parties, because remember, Onyx was a big deal, we would throw parties at mm-hmm. Onyx, and he brought Yo Gotti to town, brought me Mills to town. He was always looking for how to get some money, you know what I mean? He a money getter, he's a Capricorn, that's how they're made. That was totally a lie, he's a Virgo. Let's just keep going. <laughs> I was with that nigga for years, we have a human, he is not a Capricorn. His son is a Capricorn, though. I do though that. Hey, you, I you know I don't nigga. know I'm nothing selfish. about the stars and the moon, so you gonna be I know, like, babe, yeah, but you you're know, such a Taurus, though. You gonna be like, you know, kids do the such such. I'm be like, yeah, word. I don't know. You put up with my shit. I love you so much. <laughs> no, but let's go back to the topic at hand. So he was like flirty. I never forget. I, I think his first blunt he ever smoked. I brought it to him. We smoked weed, wow. and um, we got really high. And his mom had cornbread in the refrigerator, and um, God forbid she hears this because type of woman she is, she will call him and check him if not hit him. Um, I remember she had a white room. I hate. I always hated that. Never understood. I never understood people that had rooms you couldn't sit in. If you have a mansion, that makes sense. But this is a row home. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's it's, it's seventeen hundred square feet in here. Why can't I go in this room? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Bernadette? It's always one of them. Ronette, Bernadette, don't go in my sit down room. Like, girl, this is North Philly. <laughs> Somebody got murdered around the corner. Why can't I come in the living room? White white couches with fucking marble. Uh, they had a, the the big detail on the arms, and it's always hard and uncomfortable, and it's yeah. plastic everywhere. I'm about to say I came. I had I had one. I ain't gonna only have one aunt like that, and it was like, eh, we ain't really go over there too crazy. Like, exactly. We ain't, we we ain't fuck with that shit like that. Yo, I, that is so stupid, and it's crazy because. People become parents and try to hold on to shit like that. That's the number one thing when you become a parent. Anything you purchase, them first 10 years of them kids living, be prepared for it to be ruined. Yeah. Do not buy to... anything unless it's durable. You don't get no Basquiat. You got a motherfucking Banksy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? This motherfucker's going to curl up there. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Drawing on the walls and shit. <laughs> what? Oh, please don't get me started. My kids drew on the walls, couldn't even spell. It's like, motherfucker, you tagging. We don't even know what the fuck this say, nigga. You could at least proofread it before you wrote it. I remember my mother moving to the suburbs. I cried every day the first year we lived here in Newcastle, Delaware. And I carved in her steps. We, the house that she bought had a skylight. Beautiful. And it was a wood banister behind it. And I carved, I hate it here. And that motherfucker. I'm talking about each wood. I-H-A-T-E it here. And she didn't see it for years. So when she finally seen it, she was like, what is this? I was like, oh, my, I was suicidal back then. That's when I cried every day from the trauma not having a father. I've always been very manipulative. One time, let me see you. Come, let me see you. Come. One time I got on punishment for the summer. I think because I was rolling up oregano and smoking it and I set my mom's comfort on fire. I was bad. <laughs> I was on punishment for the whole summer. I came in the living room. My mother had bought her first house when she was 20 years old. We lived at 141 East Albany. It's in Alany, okay? You know where that is, Rising Sun? So I'm serious. Are you from North Philly? No, I'm Southwest. Nobody, come on, bro. Don't nobody say Southwest with no oomph. You just say Southwest. You said, nah, Southwest. You say Southwest with a little embarrassment connected to it. It should be shame connected. No, I'm just joking. Um, you know where it is, sis? Okay, so, um, you know that neighborhood kind of went downhill. It wasn't always horrible, but um, shout out to everybody. Shout out to the person that lives in my old house, 141. I'm sure there's still boogers under the fucking banister and um, window sills. I was heavy, dig my nose, put a booger under something. Um, anyway, Facts. that was your thing too? Bro, I'm going to leave a booger. Leave a booger, I'm leaving a booger hurt. somewhere, Facts. my nigga. Because I, I, was, I wasn't no boogie eater, so I got to get a, you mean? Get I definitely ate them shits and left. I did half and half. I eat Damn. half and left half. <laughs> I definitely ate boogers heavy for a nice amount of time in my life. Like, it was a thing. Like, I would openly do it. My fuck like, you just ate a boogie and I'm, it's my nose. I was one of them. It's my nose. Yeah. Remember them? 
Like, I could do whatever because it's mine. <laughs> Facts. Like, bro, you just ate a scab, my nigga. I definitely Seek help. Me, hit a nigga with the, <laughs> Shout out to the scab this. eaters. You never ate a scab? I never no, ate a scab. I don't, I'm not like eating I never nothing ate a scab. off my. Nah, I don't. I've ate some boogies. I'm not. Uh, uh. You know, as a mother, your baby's caught, like sick, you'll suck everything out the mm-hmm. nose with mouth. Mm-hmm. I heard what you said, as a mother. My last child, I had that motherfucker just pulled it out, grabbed that nigga by his head. Gave him to the doctor, wipe him off like a warrior princess. Zena, the warrior princess. This conversation is getting crazy. Where were we at? Why was I talking about Albany Street, guys? He don't fucking know. He don't listen to me. <laughs> Who was we talking about, bro? Um, you don't listen either? You start telling the story, yeah. Employee of the month goes to LaVita, and this is her first day. That's fucking crazy. I know your name, Levita. You supposed to Levita. be. You always supposed to be turnt on the first day of the job. You feel me? I feel like your name could be Levita Shaquita Jackson, but it could be Levita Jones. It could be Kyle. It could be super ghetto. You could take it either way. Levita with what, baby? R T or hard T? Hard T, Puff. Okay. What's a hard T? T. It's like some college shit. Emphasis. Levita. <laughs> they used to give you Steve Harvey jokes back in the day. Why? And that was Cedric's girlfriend name, Levita, remember? Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know that. The one with the 20 to Bob? Yeah. All right, but I'm sorry, Levita. What was I talking about? All Bain Street for? Very manipulative. Yes. So look, my mother, she thank you, Levita. Crazy thank memory. you, Levita. So she got a good memory. That's not fair. Levita is a bad one. Anyway, so um, hey, I need your eyes. Come on, move <laughs> over, bro. All I can see is your chin and your body is bothering me. <laughs> Anybody sitting in that seat know they get talked to. You know the game. You've been here a lot. Remember last time you said you called me a dirty bitch? <laughs> we can move on. Levita, they treat me like shit. You see that candle ain't lit. Don't nobody give a fuck about me. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for something to drink. I had Zach said you can get the shit I just gargle with. I said, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, I said I like chocolate covered strawberries frozen. <laughs> Levita said, I know for next time. That nigga's a keeper. Is what the fuck she is. Every time you like somebody, they switch them out anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I like the young buck. What was the young buck name, Zach? Joey? Oh, she went back to school though, right? No, no. Oh, you talking about Burns Meese? I raised her. She said she listened to me all through motherfucking high school. <laughs> I raised that nigga. Somebody emailed me the other day and said, how does it feel talking about sucking dick to a girl right in front of her uncle? I was like, it feels great. Fuck. That must have been the cousin. Like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is how I'm, I'm giving you a story about how manipulative I am. So I, I was. I'm not that way anymore. I'm not that way anymore. I'm not that way anymore. Like, no, 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 no. I changed. So I'm like nine years old. I'm going to punish you for the summer because allegedly I made a blunt out of paper and oregano and allegedly it caught fire and burned my mom comforter. Allegedly, right? Because she wasn't there. So how she know? You know what I mean? So... I'm on punishment. My mom's in the living room drinking coffee, reading a book. She's always been a big reader. She used to drink coffee back then. I know she's there. I walk up to like the mock. You know how I feel like we always said the mock fireplaces, but it never was nowhere to put the wood and shit because we don't do that. And mm-hmm. this is Royals. Mm-hmm. I guess that was like, we're going to make the house look cute. I don't know what was the concept of that, but I grew up in a lot of North Philly homes that had these fake ass fireplaces in them. I don't get it. What the fuck is the point in of that? In West Philly, we had a real fireplace. <laughs> Did Santa come down it? <laughs> I hate a motherfucker that brag. Nigga, it ain't. Yeah. He's bragging. Yeah. He comes from a good family, and his mom was a baller. So my mom never lived in stories West, about. My mom never lived I, in West Your mom Philly. has nothing to do. With, I said he comes from a good family, and his mom was a baller. So I have to deal with a lot of child. We exchange child stories like this. Man, I remember that time I walked to the store and I had 50 cents. I couldn't afford a butterscotch cripper, so I stole it. Poppy caught me and choked me in front of the suey hole. Him. I remember I went to Sixers camp and I met Dr. J. And he drove me around the city in a drop top. But I tell, but she, she, she leaving out all the details. But go ahead. He had a better mother than I did. You leaving out the details. 
Nigga, we I don't had, need these. Right, That's your see, problem. See, That's yeah, the contrarian yeah, in you. No, it's not. The fact remains your childhood was lit and mine's wasn't. <laughs> bustling holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel you on your jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. This December, get back there and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. So as y'all know by now, I've been very vocal for my love for Factor Meals. They have calorie-smart options, protein plus, and so much more, y'all. Head to factormeals.com slash DCMWG50 and use that code DCMWG50 to get 50% today. That's factormills.com using my code DCMWG50 to get 50% off. Run, don't walk, y'all. Tell them I sent you. I had to work hard for it, though. She making it say, I you He feel had me? to wake up and clean on Saturday. No, nigga, I had to get on the road. Every true, June, true, but you get, got it though. But Phelps. I had, to, but I had to get on roll all year for that one little piece of that summer. That that Sixers camp, I had to snap all year for that. Pause. Besides Sixers camp, you don't think you had you got you had like lit childhood. I had I, no no. Besides di- Sixers camp, is there anything that happened in them years growing up? No. When my, you talk to your friends, right? You think to yourself like, damn, I had all that shit. Like, is it other things? Let's just take. No, so I'm saying, you're not letting me talk. Camp. You're not letting me talk. My childhood was lit. I, I couldn't bring home a C, my nigga. If I brought home a C, you wasn't getting nothing. Yeah. So I had to snap. Or I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't no fun if I ain't snap. Ask me how many times I got on a roll. <laughs> how many times you got it? I got on a roll in sixth grade for the second time. The second market period. I then took that report card everywhere and begged for money. My father got out of jail when I was in eighth grade. He changed the date, and then we took the report card around big for money. I stopped. I stopped getting money. Like after like a couple years, they was like, "All right, nigga, we used to this shit." And then the it, it got rough because I started bringing home C's. Remember when we had, when handwriting was a great? I can't control that. My handwriting was fucked up. These niggas don't write cursive. Remember Ain't when that handwriting wild? was a great? They do not do cursive. My I wonder do they at least teach them to, to create a signature and work on it so you can have was one? Ass. That's why my signature ass. Cause I I'm like, that's not fair that I can't write as nice as y'all want me to write. Bro. I hated that shit. We did we had typing or we did computers, but it would remember we had to do the yep. test to get it in a certain yep. amount of speed. And we also had to know how to write in cursive. We had to did they used to put it would the, be assignments um, due in cursive. Yep. Remember that? We used to have to write whole essays in the these motherfuckers. These kids are goners. They're <laughs> fucking, they're, they're, they're goners. Not to mention, half these motherfuckers through COVID. <laughs> the motherfuckers ain't read nothing, do nothing. What? Start content creating. <laughs> bro, these niggas is TikTokers and YouTubers, bro. These motherfuckers got passed. No child left behind. Pass, yeah. pass. They slow. But the educated motherfuckers in the next 10 years is going to stand out. Lil Mookie don't know the difference between a diamond and a goddamn circle. Damn. That motherfucker don't know his middle name, if it's his middle name or his last name. Ask one of these motherfuckers their address. They don't know it. Word, we said to know the shapes and all that. I bet you they know their mother email for some Roblox. The future is fucked. These kids is going to shit. Smush is doing really well in school, though. Shout out to Smush. Shout out to Smush, man. Um... Smush also recently, oh, let me tell the story for love of God. So my mom's in the living room. She's drinking her coffee, reading her books. She used to smoke uh, Virginia Slims at the time. My mom was a weirdo. She had phases because she was smoke. She wasn't even in hell. Okay, great, uh, Bill Clinton. Um, you know, Virginia Slims, the long black joint. She's like Carilla DeVille, just dumb. I ain't feeling my mom right now. She ready to get it for five minutes. Tell her. Tell her what the fuck I said about her. Wanda, Maria, <laughs> yeah, that one, Green Eyed Goblin, Evil Scorpio. <laughs> Um. So, because I feel like I also didn't talk about my grandma's birthday party. I have to talk about that. 
So anyway, so she's in the living room minding her business because she worked doubles and triples to buy her first house at 20 with no motherfucking help. Let's go. Um, and we didn't have any furniture. That's why I brought up the fact that, you know, she bought it for her house. We, you know, I remember riding my bike through the house. You know, we had to, we had to build that up to get the furniture and everything. Mm-hmm. She bought the house for 47000 sold it for ninety. dollars My mom's a bad bitch. So um, I knew she was there, and I walk in. I go to the window. We had bars on every window. There's no sun. The view is the house next. It's gray. <laughs> I look out like I'm looking at a beach or something, and I go, I don't know how I'm gonna make it this summer. I wish my dad wasn't in jail. <sighs> wish I had a dad. Sometimes I just wanna kill myself. I hate living. And she said, "Go outside." <laughs> it was a scam. I knew she was sitting there. That's actually terrible. It's not even <laughs> that funny, was your but that's joy? what happened. Killed it. I did that shit like five times when she caught on. Nah, damn. Mom said she knew I was a piece of shit when she would always sit me on her lap. Like at one, because I talked early. And she would go, Mona, are you happy? She said, and I would go, yes. <laughs> Mona, are you happy? Yes, mommy. She said at one point, Mona, are you happy now about three? No. And I would look down. No. And she would, why was wrong? I would be happy if I had chips. <laughs> Indeed. That's where it started. Yeah. Holla at me. Um, real quick about Smush. Smush is flourishing. He is doing well in school. Smush was rough. Smush was like, Amina was super sweet, really kind, loved animals, loved people, loved her family. <laughs> she never got in trouble in school ever. Like, it was like no way possible, right? Um, she went through a stage where she thought she was pink or white. She just told me that recently when she went to elementary school to all white school, she wanted to be white. Like she actually had those feelings and thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why did you never tell mommy? She was like, because you're Angela Davis. Like, bitch, I thought I would be put out. You would have been. You little race traitor. Part, was part of that because she was like light too, though. So was, Disney. Yeah. I blame it on Disney. She was obsessed with Disney and Disney and Disney World. The only people that are do well are white girls, pretty white girls, blonde, blue eyed, mm. or pretty perfect red hair, brown hair. As a young black girl, if you watch Disney all day, nothing about you is pretty. Yeah. Your hair is short compared to theirs. Our hair could be long, but it uh, shrinkage, right? Levita. We have shrinkage. So if our hair is in our back, it still could get bobbed. Yeah. So I don't have any hair. My skin's not pretty because it's not perfectly white like them. I don't have a prince. In some of the families, there's no king because daddy ain't there or you got a step king. Mm-hmm. They don't never put that in Disney, step king, which is reality. The original king left the palace. Mm-hmm. So we had to get the king third cousin. That's reality. You know, them white people did it to their cousins for years. Shout out to DuPonts. Rich whites would keep it in the family to keep the money in the family and fuck each other. Yeah. These I'm, motherfuckers born with four ears. They can never put it together. I used to I used to see them motherfuckers all the time. There's a lot of them on the low. They be like just floating. Who the fuck you used to see all the time? DuPonts. Nigga? Oh, I thought you were about to say inbreds. I was like, where do you hang? Nah, just the, the woods. Just, just that. They don't they the only ones around here. Yeah. It is a known thing that the French the Dutch, the white, kept it in the family. You know who else did it? Pakistanis. Rich, those rich Pakistanis and stuff. Yeah. You think it's a million Patels. <laughs> wow. It's a lot of Johnsons, but it's way more Patels, my nigga. You heard me? Right. I know a Patel each elementary, high school. Yeah, a lot of Patels. Community That's college, the first, second, third, and fifth time. All different Patels. They don't even know each other. They don't even know each other. You know? Shout out to them Patels. Is it racist to say they keep a dog of donuts in the family? Y'all keep a dog of donuts, don't y'all? You motherfuckers keep dog of donuts circulating. Y'all got the dog of donuts game on lock. When I was a child, you went to dog of donuts and a white man gave you a donut. Yeah. Now I go to dog of donuts, I don't know if I want curry or a glazed donut. I mean, Is that it, racist? It's true, motherfucker. It used to, I mean, it it's was true, nigga. Before dog of donuts, it was 7 Eleven. Yes, or during is still. Thing about them to me, they lock it down. Bro, I used to work at a Mexican restaurant called Moles. The guy that owned it was like a kid in the family. No shade, he seemed like a fuck up because he had that hip hop vibe to him, loud music, and you know. And um, they would, you know, one of them lost it, just sold it to the brother. 
They legit, I watched them in a year working for them, just con- McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, at the Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, it might be a hotel here and there, like a cheap hotel, but it was all the Dunkin' Donuts. It's one more, like, fast food spot that was real heavy in their family. I think Subway. Um, yeah. Subway, but they that's the thing. They be grabbing them up, too. That's the fact. thing, yeah. The Dunkin' Donuts near my house closes at five because they got robbed four times that year. I live in a nice area, but if you sneeze, you'll be in the projects. I can live in a good area, but I can hear. I'm good with that. I got my toe in the streets. Um, let me hurry up because there's a lot of stuff I want to say. Um, but yeah, shout out to Smush. Smush is doing well. Smush was my first rough baby. Shout out to the parents. Um, that second kid will try you. That second kid will, you know, and it's like you just don't care about the second kid as much as you care about the first one. The first one, you get him a nursery, get the room all right. The second one, you put a blanket in the dresser drawer, put that motherfucker in the dresser. You know what I mean? Like your grandparents used to do. You know what I mean? You check on them, pull the drawer open. You good, nigga? Close it. Keep them warm. No fuss, less mess. You know what I'm saying? Um, you name them some simple shit, John, Bill, Bat, you know, something easy, kid, child, you know. Um, and you just don't worry about them. You drop your first child, you take that motherfucker to the ER. Not the ER, the children's hospital ER. You drop your second child, you don't even pick him up. You look as he sleep, right? My second kid fell asleep, will fall asleep. In the weirdest position, stuck. I know his neck gonna be fucked up, pillow attached to him. He got his head on the ground, his body on the couch. Don't touch him. <laughs> Let that nigga rest. We'll figure out that kink he gonna have in the back of his neck and his head later. But my second one gave me a hard way to go. He cussed early. He was very mean. He had a hard birth, like I already told y'all. The day Smush was born was the same day he almost died. The same people that almost killed him rescued him. My son was placed on a cooling blanket for 72 hours where he was kept at like 30 degrees um, to stop injury. It's a very popular tactic used in sports to stop like break it, breaks and stuff, like break your leg, your ankle or whatever. But they've started to use it for brain injury as well. A lot of people don't know when a child is going through childbirth, if they lose oxygen in those little valuable seconds or minutes, it causes damage forever, you know? Mm. So... He, um, they do something called um, Apgar. Levita, you have kids? You know about the Apgar score? It's, it's, it's real simple. I might be saying it wrong or I'm going to Google it, saying it wrong or thinking wrong about it. But basically, it's just a simple score that they take as soon as the baby come out the pussy, still hot and slimy, to make sure that he's on the level. You know what I mean? And it's as simple as this. Pick up the hand, let it fall. Pick up the leg, I see you. Let it fall. You know what I mean? Um, because they expect something. So when they pick, I'll never forget, they picked up Rashad's arm and it flopped down. That's not normal. It's supposed to be some kind of move. It's a newborn. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mind you, they're doing, um, let me Google it. They're doing um, other tests too, listening to the heart. I feel like I've talked about this before. You got kids too, right? Yes, girl. Listen, the scoring system provided a standardized assessment for infants after delivery. Um, APGAR score compro- compro- excuse me, APGAR, APGAR score com- comprises. What is what is that? I don't get it. Why would it be comprises? Like everything comprised okay. of. I've never heard the word used that way. I don't know if I'm retarded or I'm reading wrong. Comprises of five components. That's what's fucking me up because I keep thinking about components. Number one, color of the baby, heart rate, reflexes, muscle tone, and respiration. But that makes sense, mm-hmm. right? So with Rashad, when we got on the labor floor, it just so happened that we all the girls went into labor at the same time. And I was being patient and trying to be a trooper because I come from a family of nurses. So I know how things go to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. And you rushing them or harassing them, it doesn't really help your situation. Of course, advocate for yourself, speak up. But if it's a situation that you can kind of handle yourself, because a lot of people go to the hospital act like the hospital staff is like a butler. Yeah. I need ice. I need It's like, that's cool, but it's other patients here. And some people are, like, going through shit, you know? So mm-hmm. I always come from that aspect because 
I had a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother that dealt with patients' families. And it would be like damn near about the their day was the worst when the family came nasty. It wasn't the patient, it was the family. Mm-hmm. And also, if you know anything about medical stuff, you know the nurse is the one that get the job done, especially having a baby. The, the doctor don't deliver the baby. The nurse does. That head OBGYN nurse that's on the, that's the one that's really in the muck with you and delivers the baby with you. Um, but so I'm trying to be as patient as I can be. His heart rate kept dropping, but it wasn't like too extreme, but it kept happening. Somebody would come in, the nurse would come in the room, do a little something, and then he would like, you know, it would go up a little bit. But when shit got scary and I called for help, when she called for help, everybody was busy. This is Christian Hospital in Delaware. They they have a really, really big legal team, and they kind of run the medical, air, medical you know, shit in Delaware. So they're the Goliath. Like, I had a lawsuit, but after how many lawyers I would have had to pay, like, I would have ended up with five grand. That's how, that's how hard they fight, whether they wrong or, or right. And you already know black people are treated way different, in, and people that get Medicaid and stuff are treated way different than other races. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So... I went to the hospital pregnant with a child. At one point, I think I had like a kidney infection or kidney stones. They put me in a wheelchair and pushed me to the wall where I faced the wall because I was in horrible pain. Anybody had kidney stones know how. Anybody had kidney stones in here? Mm-mm. I'm not sure, babe. Yeah, yes. And he was in like screaming pain. Bro, it's. Rocks form where they're not supposed to be, and the only way is through your urethra. Imagine a rock passing through yeah, your urethra. Yeah, that's when your blood makes with your urine, right? No. I don't know what it is, but you got to pee it up. Some people just form them all the time. It's just um, something. It'd be a side effect from medication or another condition they have, but it, it's happened to me once, and it's rough. Like, it's like, I've never experienced pain like that. Mm-hmm. I never forget I was in so much pain that I was getting, like, delirious. Like, my words didn't make any sense. I couldn't really stand up. It was just that extreme. Mm. That's probably the worst pain I've ever been in, honestly, the kidney stone thing. It only happened to me one time. I hope it never happens again. Um, But anyway, a state trooper had got shot in his toe. And they went crazy (laughs) about it. And they parked me against the wall. And uh, my peripherals, like, they over there doing stuff. What they over there doing? Same thing they always do. I'm a street bitch. I be feeling like somebody about to rob me. I have PTSD from being in the streets. Like, bro, there's no way you can't not have it. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever been stuck up? None of you ever been robbed at gunpoint? Anybody ever see a mur- somebody get murdered? Yeah, I probably like Missed three it. times. Not right in front of my face. Bro. Up the and street. me coming up, I never associated it like therapy or nothing like that because it was so common my friends seen it too but i always say it like this them little white boys go to to the war for two years they see some foul shit for six months of the two years they leave early honorable discharge and they're in therapy for the rest of their life and they get a check for shit that some of us grow up in yeah niggas gotta go to counseling mm-hmm. better help i'm a bad bitch hey babe look what i'm doing Tell these people on the mic that you love me and I got the best pussy in the world. Best pussy in the world, hands down. Love you, baby. All right, talk to you <laughs> later. You know who that is? Yeah, that's why I was laughing. I could tell who it was. Um, he meant that best pussy part, though. That's not cat. Um, I have really good pussy. Like, it's real. Do y'all believe me when I say that? How about you, Zach? I don't need your attitude, Southwest. Um, what was I talking about, y'all? I know his name is Zach. I never said nothing about y'all mom. Stop lying. I never, I never knew a black person had a Zach. Only Zach I knew was from Saved by the Bell. Y'all are the first niggas I know named Zach. Power Rangers, it was a black Zach. She ain't watched Power Rangers. Oh, no, I did watch Power Rangers, but I hated black Zach because he wore fake hair. He wore kinkalon braids, and that really bothered me. (laughs) 
I hated him. I still hate he, him. He today. didn't start out with that hairstyle. Bro, he started out with the bob. He had low cut first. Yeah, he had a low. He had like a little. You box. really disrespect me. I really watch Power Rangers, nigga. <laughs> yeah, he had the box first. <laughs> I know what you're talking about when he had the Marcus Houston. Jones. I don't remember the box. I just remember them 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 Kinkaline braids. That but he had a braided bob. The motherfucker like Brandy or Missy Elliott. <laughs> yeah, he had the Marcus Houston. He Jones had the style. mysticals. He ain't start out with that. <laughs> Mystical's a predator. Y'all know Mystical's a rapist. Yeah. Crazy. Still bump his songs. I can't help it. I ain't, it's hard to cut them off. I don't understand what they expect. Cause you know, like I I I had um I had went down Tory Lanes. Get it? Memory Lane, Tory Lane. And Tory Lanes is a real like he's a, he's he is very talented. I I feel like he was a dick eater a little bit, like with flows, but I think that's a Canada thing because Drake does the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like they'll get next to something and they consume, and now it's them. Motherfuckers speaking pet talk. Why, why? Like, they bro. They, the top artists from Canada before Justin Bieber, Drake, and Tory Lanez in my eyes was Cardinal Official, nigga. They didn't have like no spitters or no or anything. Hip hop was American. Right. I don't know. But no. Even- it's niggas right now that I fuck with from Canada. I'm not gonna remember their name. It's a chubby boy with pretty hair, and they got their own style. It's a personal choice. Ew. Why I do that like that? Do you see what's on it? It's ants. Ew. I just got it from out the candy jar. Ew. That's wild. Damn, I hope that shit ain't in my bag. Fuck. That's because you keep eating them old ass Tootsie Pops. Nobody eat them shits. No, those are the new flavors. Like they got raspberry, lime, and all that. That shit just came out, my nigga. I know it just came out, but it's still an old ass Tootsie. I'm uh, sorry. All right, whatever. I thought I was exclusive. Because <laughs> when I grew up, you only could get red, purple, brown. brown. Oh, my. You got the brown Tootsie Pop. I was like, what the fuck? I already right, don't that, have a the, dad. Yeah, that was all grandma work, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ugh. My girl I'm kept them little candies that was strawberries on the outside the package. Like the oh, whole yeah. package of strawberries. I like them. I fuck I with them. I hate them shits. Or that butterscotch with that with that with that yellow orange with mustard package. Yeah. Ugh. Could you get some new candy, bitch? Or big red. That's, I don't chew no big red. That was bitch. better than the mints. Oh, the soft ones that melt in your mouth the, when the you chew them. Mints, yeah. <sighs> It's so much I want to talk about. I'm nowhere near done. Um, but let's just hurry up because they I'm they're rushing me and they don't like when I spend a lot of time with y'all. Demona is going on tour. I'm doing a stand-up Uh-oh. tour because I'm a funny ass bitch. The first show is December the twenty seventh in Philadelphia. You can buy the tickets on my Instagram page by the time this podcast come out. You bitches better come. And we doing a meet and greet. And the meet and greet, I could sign your titties, your coochie if it's bald, um, or a t shirt if you buy one. I could make you an Instagram video or I could take a picture, but I ain't doing both. And you bitches ain't going to bully me. And ain't nobody getting a <laughs> hug unless they get a meet and greet pass straight up. You can touch my butt and my titties and shit. You want to touch my coochie, you got to pay extra. It's called the I'm Going to Jail Tour. Guess what it's about? Me going to fuck the jail. Y'all think I'm playing. Daddy got to go to college for a little bit. How your mom used to tell you? Daddy going away to school. But mommy, daddy's 31. Don't worry about that. You can finish your education whenever you want. You sure daddy not going to jail? Why you got that brace on his ankle? You mind your business. Do what I tell you, not what I do. Um, Yeah, so free me. Um, We're going to go on tour and run it up so I can have plenty of noodles. First, I was just going to beg y'all and say, can y'all just help me get out of the situation? I need 100000 real quick. But then I was like, mm, because I put it on Twitter. I was like, yo, if I went to jail today, would y'all help me? And they was like, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. You good for 100 on payday. You good 50 on payday. And one nigga said, fuck no, I ain't giving you shit. You got it. And he got 100 likes on that. I don't trust it. And I don't want Phelps out here fucking y'all to get me out. Who <laughs> knows he'll do what he got to do. Uh, Zach, how much you got on my bail? Ooh. You see, I, that shit made me go like this. Coochie first. Coochie almost flew from under this table. I love a nigga that makes sense. There's one thing about Zach, he's smart. You know? He's intelligent. 
That's one thing about that nigga. He can read good. Got good verbiage. He's from King of Prussia. He's not from the bottom like us. That's how I tell y'all apart. <laughs> K.O.P. Zach. And Southwest Zach. <laughs> I separate you niggas from zip code. <laughs> nah, I think it's weird. You're older than him, aren't you? I'm 43. You? Yeah, and that's the weird thing because you look really, really young. Like, if I just was to guess your age, I would give you, like, 30 easy, 28 easy, yeah. Because that's what I really remembered about y'all. That's what made me, because I do have a shitty memory because I was prescribed Xanax at a young age, and it causes memory loss. Joke. I just used to buy Zannies. They was two for five. That was my shit. I would buy two Zannies for $5. I would get me a Smirnoff Twist, a wine cooler, and then I would get the Smirnoff Vodka. I would pour out a little bit of Smirnoff Twist, pour the whole vodka in the joint, and I would pop two Zannies. And I would wake up the next day in the backseat of my own car with some stranger driving it. <laughs> it was a wild year. You know, 12th grade. You know, I made it. I made it. Got quiet in this motherfucker. Now you get the pill joke from earlier. <laughs> ba -da -ba. Ba -da -ba. I come from that era though. State property was out talking about syrup and shit. That's why people be talking about the kids that's on the syrup and all the drugs. We was on drugs, nigga. We was just on different drugs. Now the kids is all on shrooms, a lot of opiates. The people that take it far, they on the Fetty, you know. Some of them, God forgive them, some of them on the Fetty and don't even know. Mary Jane, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I ain't trying to hear that shit. I'm lost, babe. That's the song about LSD. Ah. Oh. From back in the day. Mary Jane by uh, Rick James? Yeah, that's about weed. Oh, it's not about weed? That, oh, okay. That's about weed. So no, what's I, the one about LSD? Uh, I think the Beatles. Oh, okay. Was, yeah. The whites always did that. But I'm saying niggas, Jimi Hendrix, niggas did it too. No, we got some songs. We got, um, I'm your mother, I'm your father. No, that ain't really one. That, ain't, that don't really count because I think that song was about... Selling drugs and shit. Pusher man. Yeah. But I'm we the conversation is more about songs that had the secret drug messages more on a we like these drugs vibe. Pusher the pusher man was more kind of denouncing it, yeah. which is different. Nah, but they had the songs that liked it. I know I'm trying to think of one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Shit, Afro man, nigga. Yo, it's a cup. No, bro. I'm think all I'm thinking of is early eighties and seventies. Oh, early and I'm 80s thinking and about 70s. black people. Um, Y'all answer this on the comments, but it's like it's, it's all of them are escaping me. Um fuck, this is making me so mad. Perfect example of a white one, Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah. So that's like sneaking it in. I like we black people, we had those kind of songs, but I can't think. It's one eighties one right now, and it's kind of like that era of when you left disco and got to club music, but it was about I, doing coke. It's a black man. What the fuck is I it called? I know what you're thinking of, but I don't think he was singing about coke. He just looked high in the video. But what's the song, Tate? Just the, tell um, me. The John that PZ sample, the doom, do, 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 the nick. But how the song go, though? Uh, dun, dun, dun. Don't look any further. Don't look any further. Damn, I don't know. The doom, doom, the doom, the doom, the doom, the doom, the Huh? No, I don't think, but the nigga look fried when he's singing it, though. He got the coke jaw, so I think that's what she's thinking of. And it got that feel, but it's like, I feel like drug music in the 80s was like a lot of that um, that disco shit. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm obsessed with anything that's like New York City, um, 70s, 80s, 90s. Like, I love that. Anything about it. You know that disco in that house shit started in the Midwest, though. They stand on that. They ain't, they ain't start in New York. They come get you. Because I said something on here like Detroit. It was like, no, nigga, Chicago. I was like, oh, my bad. Yeah, I don't, I'm not saying start. I just, that scene the in scene, New York yeah. is just something that I like. I don't know who started, where it started. I don't give a fuck. We not about to have a the rap start in the Bronx. This start with, you call KRS one and all them <laughs> teeth and y'all talk about it with them. Well, New York, they don't, we I'm don't, not getting in that. They don't let that pass. But that that house shit, it be, a, it be different. Um, one thing I do whatever. know. Is Delaware started to swag. And you white line Philly <laughs> niggas need to stop playing with that. Because I seen y'all trying to steal that. Delaware don't got much. They got the two-step, the one that Mar made from over north side. Mm -hmm. The Newcastle Ave niggas, shout out to Cash Ave. They got their own two-step. Mm -hmm. And they got the swag. That's it. Delaware don't have a lot of stuff. 
Don't y'all take that from them people. <laughs> yeah. Don't make them 40-year-old niggas come out of retirement to and show y'all up, something. Uh, niggas go dig up the Charlemagne tweet from like three years ago. Um, What are we talking about, y'all? I still didn't even get the smush. I don't feel like I never said what I had to say about smush. You just kept, he was, he's been doing good in school. He has been doing good in school. The, um, smush, and the reason why I brought that up at is your because. Party, at the party, and at your party, at your grandma's party? Yes. Okay. He was so. He was just he was just rough. Like so he had that rough start. He almost died. He um his heart rate kept dropping. We call the nurse in and the nurse is she starts to cry. So now I'm scared, right? Plus my mom's a nurse, so she could read these machines. She knows what's going on. I'm like, you know, why are you so upset? She's like, nobody's answering the phone. I don't know what to do. I told the bitch, call 911. I said, call the police, bitch. Take us somewhere else. Let's get it, let's get some help. So um I say to her, listen. I don't even want to have him natural anymore. Cut him out right now because he's going to die. Because now my mommy shit is kicking in. He's dying inside of me. This is not right, right? Mm -hmm. Which to me is mind-boggling. I can tell a doctor staff, okay, I want to have a C-section. And there's no argument. There's no nothing. They just start, you know, getting ready for it. My dad had never even offered it to me. Not once. They knew I wanted to have it natural. But they never once said, yo, maybe we should have a C-section because his heart keep dropping. But uh -huh. wow, you would need staff to say that, right? Not a bubbling, crying 50-year-old white woman. So I said, look, let's go downstairs. Let's get it. My the whole time yelling, yo, we got to go. Let's go. Let's get it. We got to go take him out right now. And we go downstairs. And um, this is how much they was fucking up. When they had cut me open, they had brung his father the wrong way so he saw me. Because they supposed to bring you one way so you don't see that. Mm -hmm. All I see is him looking like oh, shocked as fuck because he's watching out my limbs on the, um, not my limbs, my organs on the table. But um, I don't know if I said this on the podcast or not, but this really happened. They've given me a, um epidural in my back or the numbing in my back so that they can cut me open. And I have the nurse that was crying for about an hour and the anesthesiologist in the back of me and, like, another nurse assistant holding me up. The anesthesiologist and the nurse that was crying start to shove each other, and I fall. Because they're fighting. They got in a shoving match. And I, yeah. hate, I hate, like... How can I say it? Like, like the real medical situations having to support somebody and that—that that shit is like. Ugh. What you mean, babe? I'm. I don't like the. Like, I walk in a room and you sitting there with your stomach cut open. That's not my thing. Like, I'm not like a. Um, I don't like that kind of stuff. Phelps, nobody. Like no. that's like that. That is, is that is that common that. When people are having kids together, they'll purposely have a certain way you go walk so you will not yeah. see that. They'll have this sheet. And I'm saying that to say that's most people, you know? Yeah. When you have a C-section, they have a whole sheet covering. And you and him are discussing living your life and staff come make sure. And then that's a whole separate entity because they know most people get, like, lightheaded or upset or, you know? I, I just feel like I know gory, disgusting people where it's like they don't be grossed out by a lot. And I'd be like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, it's that's some, it's, it's yeah. Like, And I think that's more of a smaller group. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't saying everybody. I just was like, I feel like people I know are just like, oh, no, nah, it ain't no thing. And I'm like, nigga, what? This is a lot. And blood don't make me pass out or nothing. Like, it ain't even like that. But it's just like, ugh. Should be smelling funny. Um... Uh, what was I saying? Okay, so anyway, we go down there. I just had to cuss Conehead out. Shout out to Conehead. He'll never be on this podcast again. <laughs> um, We down there. They get into the shovel match. I almost fall. They apologize. It just got crazy. But when they took him out, he was blue. Like, mm. he was not. And he was so fat and so cute. And he looked so healthy. But he was blue. Mm. And I looked over, and they picked his arm up, and his arm dropped. And I said to his father, He's dead. And um, they were like doing stuff to him, and he let all this women be like, Ugh. it sounded like a last breath. Yeah. And I remember his father saying, in total denial, no, he's not. You heard him. I said, yeah, I heard him take his last breath. He's dead. They killed him. Wrap this up, put me back together. They killed him. I'm like, yo, let's go. They killed him. Um, and they fucked him up, and they, he was in like the um, intensive care automatically. And they offered it like, yo, we really don't know what's going to happen. It's such a go from here. You know, we do have this thing, this cooling blanket, if you're willing, you know, but it may cause blindness. And it may burn his skin. And it may, you know, but the positive outweighs the negative. Do you want to do it? Mind you, this is after they give me all this shit, like sedatives and all that. Because they do that to you because they know you're about to flip because your kid is like, you mm -hmm. know. So I make this decision all fucked up on whatever they gave me plus whatever they had to use to cut me in half. And um, it worked. 
He did get like a skin burn, but he it saved him. Mm, he he still... walked that nine months. He talked that ten months. You know. You know what I? We that? had to do child. I'm sorry to cut you off. We ahead. had to do child development, special child development, where somebody would come out and see if he was making milestones because the cooling blanket caused so many problems. You don't really know for a while, and he was just. So, like, quick that we kind of just ended it. You know what I mean? But he even went to a special needs daycare because I didn't know what he would need when he got older. You didn't know how he was going to develop. Yo, I I ate that shit like a fucking monster. It's like you never know you're strong enough to deal with stuff. And also, you never plan for an unhealthy baby or a dead baby. You're Mm -hmm. so excited about it. You get to worrying about, I hope his head ain't big. I hope he cute the whole time. You need to hope that this motherfucker makes it. We're going to breathe. And you make it too. Childbirth is the closest thing to death. That's why when you niggas get bitches pregnant and treat them like shit, it's really... It's really taboo because, like, that's when she gets the benefit of the doubt. Like, that 10 months, best treatment, fruit, water, snacks, whatever, back rubs, head, mm. hold her down because she's bringing a piece of you in the world and she's also risking her life to do so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a big deal. And also, black women are treat black women die in childbirth more than any other person in the United States. So it's like, we be in for a rough ride. But, um, yeah, Swish was in a rough and he was just mean. He he didn't smile. We would be in the supermarket and we'd be, oh, he's so cute. And he would he would never blink or smile. Or it would be so awkward. Like a group of old ladies right there by the arugula. And they just, oh, look at him. A dookie, dookie. Can I touch his foot? Tickle. And he would legit. <laughs> like a man, just a snarl. Just get your white ass out of here. Like if I could think, you know, read his mind and be, bitch, don't touch my foot. Don't touch this cart. Get the fuck up out of here. You, so we can get you, this milk and dip. When you was talking about Smush, I was thinking like, if Smush was like the exact person who he was, but he had like light sensitivity and had to wear glasses indoors, like, oh my God, he would be so turned. <laughs> he would be like way worse, but it would be like. Bro, Smush was. Smush, he would be rich already, probably. <laughs> Once he started talking, he was just really super sarcastic, downright rude. He would say whatever the fuck he wanted. He was very irritated easily. And when he got the daycare, he just got in trouble. Soon as, bro, he was three, the number one complaint was that he would walk out the front door. <laughs> His daycare was in the like the same neighborhood as our house. Mm-hmm. And they would call and say, Demona, you have to come get him. He's walked out two or three times. Like he just leaves. I'm like, what is he saying? He, he wants to go home. <laughs> I dealt with a lot of bullshit for Swish. And then once he went to elementary, it just was like, I mean, yo, remember the time when a nigga got an attitude and decided to go hide in the closet and they thought he was kidnapped? Cool. And they called. He got upset by something that the teacher gives out gifts or something if you do something right. She kept ignoring Swish or not picking him or something. So he walked out to close to the principal's office, got in the janitor's closet and hid for an hour. They didn't know where he was. They thought he was kidnapped. They called like, we have bad news. I am sorry to tell you, we don't know where your son is. It's been an hour. And by the time his father got up there, he just popped out like, hey, hey, yo, I was in the closet right there. And then when you say, why? Why would you do something like that? I wanted to know that y'all miss me. Straight face. That's my boy. I'm so proud of him. He's such a, he's such a, he's a joy. But no, he was stressful. And it changed, it changed a lot the way I thought and the way my life went because when you had an easy going kid, you don't really worry about the drama. I know how nasty teachers get when you're bad. Yeah. I was bad. When you're bad in the second grade, they already know you coming in the third and the fourth because mm-hmm. they've been talking about you in the break room how much they hate you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got hit physically by Miss Dyson in fourth grade, Miss Farmer in sixth grade in Delaware, George Reed, and I got hit by Miss St. Julian and William Penn. And I whooped Miss St. Julian ass. Shout out to Miss St. Julian, wherever you are, bitch. She might be dead already. Fuck that bitch. First time I caught a case, my lawyer name was Mike Monica. Shout out to Mike Monica. I'm going to go because I just feel like I'm just talking. I'm going to start saying crazy shit. I'm going to be in Boston on January 3rd doing stand-up. I'm going to be at the City Winery in Boston. I'm going to be in New York City. I didn't even know that till right now. On the 29th of December and the 27th um, of December, I'll be, I'm not saying this right. December the 27th in Philly, doing stand up city winery. December 29th in New York, city winery, doing, city winery, doing stand up. Um, Boston, January 3rd, doing stand up city winery. 
The Beyond Bar Tour. I don't like that. Hmm? I just, niggas don't know me. <laughs> um, I have a lot of dark sides of the DM. Um, oh, yeah, shout out to Philadelphia for being a ski mask. Great idea. It took you long enough, dickheads. Um, people, what do you think about that? That's not right. That's not right. I think niggas killed niggas with ski masks on. <laughs> so take them the fuck off, bitch ass nigga. Um, I think only ski masks should be allowed are designer ones like Balenciaga, Dior. We're not going to know if they're real. Damn. All right. Never <laughs> mind. Take it back. Um, shout to Nardo Wick for having bitch ass niggas around them. They beat the shit out of a random white fan. It was so, te- it was disgusting. Oh, yeah, I seen that. that oh, was God, like- it was so gross. Literally, this dude is like, I love you so much. I just want a picture and I want you to pray with me. And they punched the shit out of him. And then when he fall to the ground, sleep, they stomp him. Yeah. You niggas got to stop trying to take the hood with you. Your friends can't be security because they felons, motherfuckers. They can't even carry pistols. Like, what the fuck? You got your cousin doing security and he a fucking felon. You get robbed, even square, fair, square. Your cousin shoot him back, but y'all all go to jail because your cousin is a felon and they don't look crazy. Hire real security, dumbass niggas. And then Nardo Wick is like, chill, bro. And they, he like he makes the video and he's like, clearly I didn't, you know, in the video you could see, you didn't do enough if that was my son. You should have pushed that nigga or snapped the fuck out. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they're trying to please you. They're trying to prove some weird thing to you. Yeah. Fucking weird ass niggas. Um, oh, real quick, T.I. and Tiny and their son with the big ass teeth went viral because they got into a fight in the skybox at the game. Yeah, the I Falcons still ain't game. See, like seeing uh, it started with nigga, you ain't no street nigga. You think you tough? You ain't no tough nigga. Whatever you went in the trenches. And the kid King has been trying to prove that he is tough and he from the hood for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um. Is it right if he drops the album talking about he grew up with roaches and rats and no electric? No, but nah. is it wrong that he changes the, he chases the gangster image when his father's been a gangster rapper his whole life? Like, what do people expect? Yeah. Out of all them kids, he has a country singer. He has um, his other sound like a conscious rap type. Conscious right? rap, Jake Cole boy, yeah. any hot. Yeah. He nice, and then the country singer is nice in his lane. Okay. Take the down to the old he- town road. We're going to ride <laughs> till we can't no more. Ride. Ride. What happened that to him? That was two R&B, the second ride. They packed him up. I know more than one country song, Zach. Guess what my favorite country song is? I was walking. In the moonlight, right in the starlight, just like we used to do. I was walking after midnight, searching for you. I stopped to see a weeping willow lying on a pillow. Shout out to my nigga Patsy Cline. I'm a big Patsy Cline fan. I'm world, I'm round, we're well rounded, my nigga. I like country, nigga. I fuck with Patsy Klein, nigga. I fuck with that bitch. Country weak. It's not true. I like country music. They sound like they sad. They don't own niggas no more. Rod Wave like that too. Um, y'all was mad about that, right? Ooh, I got your panties in a bunch. She still ain't gonna fuck you, girl. You ain't no jelly donut. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so they get into this fight. It, it turns innocent and then it gets excited. His mom, at one point, this was the funniest part of the whole argument. See, I said, You ain't had to grow up with no roaches. You ain't had to grow up with no roaches. They said, Yeah, you ain't got. The mom's like, Yeah, you you always wanted to go to Nana house. You wanted because I guess Nana lived in the hood. Mm-hmm. And um, somebody in the background, I don't know who it is, but it got to be an uncle from the projects. He go, In your ear, nigga, in your ear. <laughs> what does he mean when he He's say saying he never had a roach in his fucking ear because when you go over roaches, they crawl in your orifices. <laughs> Thank, bro. The poverty in a nigga over forty yelling in your ear, a roach in your ear, nigga. You never had a roach in your ear. It's crazy. It was the blackest argument I've ever seen in my life, and I enjoyed every minute of it. This is where it got crazy. The mom snatches the phone. Now she's on the live, and she say, only reason why you wanted to get to your grandma is because you wanted that pacifier. Now, this is why that's fucked up. Everybody know that that boy mouth 
is shaped like a McDonald's arch. <laughs> that boy mouth big as a motherfucker, and his teeth are a U, an upside down capital U, and did nothing do that to that child but that pacifier. So why would you, as the mother, <laughs> snatch that boy phone and say to a million motherfuckers, he just wanted to pass by. That's why he wanted to go down there. You went too far, Tiny. <laughs> and that's why that nigga start bucking at your goddamn husband. And see, I did what every black father would have did. He put that motherfucker in the head like I rammed his head to the wall as he should have. And I still seen people in the comments, he need to do more. What you want him to kill him? That's his fucking son. Yeah. He can't punch in that motherfucker translucent. He'll be bruised for two months, that boy's pale, with that big-ass mouth. <laughs> that motherfucker got 63 veneers in his motherfucking mouth. See, I would have broke his goddamn hand if he'd have punched him. That boy got a big-ass mouth. Be funny looking. That child been funny looking since birth. He's a ginger. <laughs> God bless him. Get that nigga what he want, because he look weird. He always did. He like a little troll. He look like his mother. He lucked up with the mother ones. That nigga funny looking. He asked to come on the pod a while ago. The, the invite is still open, okay? Join us here at the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast. God forbid we got a ride together. We get in the car and that boy will chop my head off, right? You ever think of that, how dangerous that is? Motherfucker with a mouth that big, flying through the air. Let's move on. Um, I don't want to cause any problems. I love y'all. Um... Guys, voicemail. Zach, can I go find a Give me, I'll give you, give me two weeks, Daddy. I got you. And we can put interest on it. We talked about that before. Remember that time we talked about the, with the circus. Talk about it later, babe. Um, are you gonna come to my stand-up show, Zach? Guess what, Zach. I would, I would hire you to help me with that show. Like to like run it and make sure the comics go on on time and make sure DJ plays right. Is that like beneath your thing? Okay, what's that title called, the person that does the show? And you know what the biggest, the biggest feat is going to be the most frustrating? The meet and greet. They're going to really, because we only could do like three to five minutes. They can't really be crazy touchy. You know what I mean? Because I'm touchy, but it's like, come on, bro. You know? My show in Philadelphia on my birthday some years ago where I got T-boned 10 minutes before I got on stage, um, a lesbian put her hand in my pocket and squeezed my ass, but she put money in it. And she was like, I know I'm not supposed to do that, but I put something in there. So I wasn't able to check my pocket till I left. It was a five and a ten. <laughs> <laughs> but not like five and a ten from the Mac, like piggy bank, balled up, yeah. greasy. <laughs> I mean, never mind. That show was a mess. I, I got it. a personal chef to come in and cook for all the comics. And like, hey, you know, like I'm talking about like fresh spinach, lamb chops, this and that. I didn't get one thing to eat. They ate the whole birthday cake. I didn't get anything. And I got, I was late, but I got T-boned. So. And those people that T-boned me tried to sue me because when they walk up to the seat and they see it's me, they're like, because oh, they walk up there they're like, we don't got to call the cops. Can we just? And I'm like, bro, whatever. I got a show. Da, da, da. When they saw it was me, oh, Changed the whole flow. And I remember talking to the cop. I'm like, bro, I got T-bone. Are we really about to like pretend? Yeah, like I, I forced him to T-bone me. Like, that's some, I'm sure it's been done, but that's some real diabolical shit that I'm not smart enough to achieve, to be honest. I'm not that bright. I couldn't time it right. I fuck around, <laughs> lose my leg doing some dumb shit. I remember that was the thing. You get a nigga to hit you. Remember that back in Southwest we was doing that? Get niggas hit our cars and we go to the pain doctor and then we get the lawsuit, you know. Yeah, get them fives. <laughs> right? Get the fives from right Aid, baby. $82. You done made $865 off them fives. I be trying to put this motherfucker say, I did it, Jesus. I play too much. I have a nigga telling the truth. But yeah, I um I really, really, really thought that it was like, I thought it was stupid and I thought it was her fault. And I felt like um, it got crazy, but I do love the fact that, um, you know, they was like, yo, stand down. We we talking, to, you know, like it's our family shit that went out there and there was no other views on it. Meaning that anybody in that skybox was loyal enough to not record. The only view they had was him being on live himself. Mm -hmm. That mean they got good people around yeah. them to a certain extent because a different group of people would have had 10 different views of it. It's family shit that happens. He's, you know, he, he, you know, he's the problem child or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. the funny part of the story, besides 
the shit that I already discussed was Atlanta in true Atlanta form, they put it on a flyer. Like the fight, it made it a party. T.I. went to the party and said, y'all ain't making a oh, fucking yeah, dollar. Oh, yeah, that's what he went to? Okay, okay. It was a flyer, like, making fun of him and his son's situation. He and said, he I don't actually know if shut it down, didn't he? He shut it down. He said, I don't know if y'all from here or what. This is my town. Y'all won't sell a beer in this motherfucker. Shut it down. Okay. Zach's joining, so clearly I suck. Um, I got a lot of DMs and we got a voicemail. I feel like we should fucking, you know, like pick between the two. Let me see. I think I'm, I feel like I had it, but sometimes, you know what it be? The way niggas intro they message, I'll be like, nope, that's, I'm not re- nope. Mona, can you do two episodes a week? I'm only reading this because I get this daily from different people. Can you do two episodes a week, like Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday? Me and the cousins all agree, bro. Let's get this shit going. We are announcing a subscription next week. We would have announced it last week if motherfuckers wasn't playing games. We are announcing a subscription last, next week where you'll be able to get bonus episodes. If you're interested, um, put in the comments right now. Ah. Say ah, but yeah, y'all been asking for a while. Y'all deserve it. Um, damn, this long. Hey, Mona. First, I want to say I nominate you for the Real Bitch Award. What the fuck do I get for being a real bitch? Nothing. Meanwhile, I had this guy I met in 2021 in the county when I was booked. I did two days, got out, and I've been rocking with him since day one for two years now. He was charged with first. Th- oh, so he was another inmate. <laughs> His story gets worse. He was charged with first degree attempted murder, four counts, and second degree assault, felony in possession. Bitch, why? Why do I have every charge this man got? This is why we have a disconnect with these DMs. There's no reason that you would tell me every fucking... Bro, he was charged with first degree attempted murder, four counts of second degree assault, felony in possession of an unlawful use of a weapon being a felon with a few other charges. Like, I don't need all of that. He was facing 20 plus years before I met him. As we became close and decided to put a title on us, I then told him I'll get him a lawyer. Bitch, he ain't even come home. Y'all, you met a nigga while you did two days in jail that was charged up with enough charges if you got convicted of all of them he'd been doing 100 years. And you kept in touch with this motherfucker? <laughs> so you ain't even smelt that dick. You don't know what it tastes like. Is it gummy? Is it the hard one that's hard? <laughs> or is it the hard one with that limp to it? You don't know what his feet look like. Do he got toes? Do his breath stink? Do his belly button juice stink? You don't know. And you talking about getting this nigga a lawyer, bro. <laughs> Y'all be trying to get a rise out of me, man. <laughs> and I don't like it, bro. I was in Lackawanna County 2007. I met a nigga named Smooth. We went together. My whole bid. You know what me and Smooth broke up? When you got out. <laughs> when they said, Demona, bag and baggage. <laughs> when I packed up, that's when I left Smooth. And Smooth called the crib a couple times. I had to tell him, stop playing, bro. You know <laughs> You know why I went with Smooth? Because he could get me Alfredo. Smooth skin wasn't smooth. His face was bumpy. Uh, you see? <laughs> Motherfucker like a sausage pizza I can't bring this nigga home Your skin fucked up in prison You ain't even trying motherfucker Wash it nigga Yeah everybody get right when they go when they get locked up Don't Nah the it? water hard it kind of fucks people up But the, his shit was greasy he wasn't washing it mm. In Lackawanna County it was a boy and girl Joe you could talk to each other in the toilet Or through the window So when they would go to wreck I'm talking to you like you've been in jail and you haven't Oh you ever do a bit? Yeah. How long? Seven years. Boo, you a criminal. Shit. <laughs> you didn't shot you a nigga like that? Somebody ain't nothing to break. Oh, you, I smell it on you. Let me see your ankle. You got a bracelet on? No, no, no. I'm off the road. You got a CO boot on right now, motherfucker. I don't trust you. <laughs> you could be a cop. When you come on? Uh, 20. I love that for you. Yeah. What the wrong black me? You see, you come home, you dealing with me? You've made it, motherfucker. You done did a little something with yourself. Was it, was it COVID or was you done? Was your bid over? Was your bid up? No, no, my bid was up. All right. Where you do your time at? New York. I did my time. In Feds? No, no, no. Rikers State Prison. Rikers? No, that's that's. Not on the, the island. island. Yeah, that's 
Yeah. yeah. Rikers is is regular jail, but they got federal holding too, don't they? Because Lil Wayne did his time over there, and that was a fed case. Yeah. So if you don't mind, what's the where were you at? What like where what prison or at least where the prison is? No, no, I went and did my time in Franklin. Um, it's up in New York, New York State. Okay. It's a lot of gangbangers up there. Yeah. And you know what's different with them? With them, because you know with us. The Muslims run the jail, period. Right. And with us, Muslims don't associate partners. But up there, the nigga be a crip and a Muslim, call him a Christlam. <laughs> because, it, yeah. listen, Muslims in, in our area, right. first of all, in Islam, the religion, right. it, you can't praise anything other than the lost man about the island. So if it's disrespectful to praise a flag, so it's like never would that happen here. Mm. But when you go to Jersey, right. you go to New York City, Chicago, them niggas is Christians, my nigga. Like they're mm-hmm. both. Like, and it's very strange, but it's real common. I was out of blood jail. Oh, oh okay. Blood. I was about to. This is my next question. Wow. Did you ever think about joining? They always were trying to get me. They yeah. Trying to get me into you look like a blood nigga. Or whatever, but nah. Oh, sex money murder. Sex money murder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right, right. Two right. nigga. Um, he banging. Now, he ain't telling you. Banging now. I know. Okay. I'm 40 years old. I'm going to go to prison and become a gang. Yeah. I don't know niggas like that. You Bro, know. I never forget I met a nigga and we talked and he did a bit and he knew a little bit of Arabic, but he also was a gangbanger. And I said to him, I said, like, You were scared to death of that motherfucker. You was like, Look, whoever going to take me? I said, I'm a lake. So, woo. You know? Yeah, it's bitch shit. You a man. That's why you didn't. I'm, like, man, I on two up there. I'm proud of you. All seriousness. Um, Damn, how the fuck did we get all the way there? What was I talking about? Because now you totally oh, understand it, it, what I'm it saying. It came from that, that DM and talking right. about, yeah. But, you know, in the co-ed jails, I don't know if you've ever been to one, number one thing is to communicate with the niggas. So whether you're trying to get something from them, because when you in them co-ed jails, some of them is going out for work release. So I'm talking to a nigga on the toilet for a week, but he fishing me tobacco and weed and lighters down. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about... I'm taking the sheet. If you ever watched the show that I told y'all to watch years ago called Jailbirds on Netflix, exactly how they fish is how we fish. Well, I don't want to say about exactly, but similar. You would take your sheets, your state sheets, and you would cut them this long. You would take your state comb that was similar to something like this, right? You would break off the first pieces, and you would make it connect. You do it on both sides. You have to get all the water out the toilet, but you don't have a plunger. Mind you, doing all this with somebody watching the window because the CEO can't catch it. They know what it look like from every angle, what you about to do. Mm-hmm. A lot of the pillows in jail are wrapped in plastic. You taking the pillow, putting your knee in the toilet, and pushing it up and down to create a suction. Like a plunger would. Mm. You getting all the water, now you putting a whole sheet on that bitch to get the rest of the water out. Now you going to clean the toilet because you dignified. No cap. You know, whatever clean supplies you got. So once you get that last little water that's in the cup out, you know, like that little bit that you couldn't get out with the pillow suction, you going to the sink and you talking through the sink to kind of start it and you, you know, engage. But then once that last bit of water is out, it's a phone clear as day to the next floor. That's crazy. Yeah. Because, you know, you either do that or vent talk. Bro, I already talked to the vents. I never talked to the vents. I talked to Beanie Siegel through the toilet. Many times. Beanie would have like Showtime at the Apollo. When we was in um me and Beanie Siegel was in um FDC together. They on six and what is that, six and arch? Right there, the Fed building. And they kept putting him in a hole because he would have niggas trying out like Showtime at Apollo disrupting the jail. So they put him in a hole and every time he was in a hole, he'd be on our line. He talked to a bitch named China that was his girlfriend. Yeah. That was lit. What? <laughs> Bro, I can make I could light a cigarette or a blunt with two batteries in a paper clip today. You feel what I'm saying? I can make a deep dish pizza with no marinara or mozzarella. You know what I mean? It creates survivors. But um we'd be talking on the toilet, me and smooth, and he would send me down shit and he kept me fed very well, but I left that nigga there. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who signs up to do a bid with a nigga? Oh my God, you you gonna hate me because you was right. Give me that battery pack, please. You were right, and I apologize. I can't have it. You doing a voicemail? You play the voicemail on my phone charge because I can't finish the DM. 
And then we're done, I promise. I'll let everybody go home. I'm enjoying myself. I like I like my people. This oh you gotta leave now? He said hurry up. Oh. He always trying to get a fucking rise out of me. So he literally said he said hurry up and sat. Like you be a real kinky. I don't have nothing else. Oh my God, Zach, I don't have nothing. Here, just take this then. Okay, thank you. Yeah, play the drum for me, baby. Thank Here. you. Hey, Damona. My name is Joe. I'm from Boston. Hey, baby. Um, I have a question. You know, the holidays are up. Thanksgiving just passed, and I got a cousin who I just beat his ass, and I just beat his brother's ass, too. Now, do I go to Christmas and New Year's with the same energy, ready to whoop ass for the holidays, or do I push it past me because... I'm really on whatever time they're on, you know? But I just want your opinion on how you would go into it. Thank you. Great question. That was a good question. Yeah, great question. Um, definitely piggybacking on the Thanksgiving shit that went viral. Thanks for making me go viral on Thanksgiving. I got a million views in 24 hours. Mm, bad bitch. Up in the function. Johnny Dang on it. It's nothing. Um, <laughs> it's a good question because what he said was, what would you do? And all jokes aside, if I knew that I could beat them, and I knew that the ass when I gave them, put them in line, then I would go. Yeah. If I had any inkling, they would jump me. You know what I mean? Like, my other cousins kind of don't like me. They're jealous of me. Like, did you do really well? Did you buy a car this year? Do you wear a lot of designer? Mm, Are you best dressed? Because they're going to bank yeah. you if so. But if you struggle a little bit in your apartment raggedy and you still live in the hood and you borrow money from people and you owe money, they probably let it go. What you could do also is you test the waters. So you call it a mouthy cousin and just, you know, hey, what's up? What y'all doing? And that bitch will be all in her eyes. You coming to Christmas? <laughs> if she get you with the... <laughs> they going to whoop your ass when you get there, babe. Okay? And it depends on your family. My father's side, we are infamous for... Every time we have an event, we fight each other right before the, the guests get there. That's what we do. Beat the shit out of each other. Jump each other. It's a loving thing. I know that I might get punched on, but I won't get stomped. I know I might get scratched, but I won't get stabbed. So... A lot of the answers are in your own head because you know them people better than me. Ask yourself a couple of questions. Did I whoop their ass good enough that they don't have to fuck with me again? Are they super envious of me or am I they not envious of me because they doing all right? And call the aunt that snort the powder that have most of the events at her crib and just, you know, drop a, you know, just put it in the air. You know what I mean? Drop a couple things and see how she responds to it. Boom. Once you figure out that it's not a safe space, go somewhere else. You a bad bitch. Find somewhere else to hang at, baby. Okay, anyway, back to um <laughs> my sister, my cousin. Um, he was charged. You already know all his charges. As we became close and decided to put a title on us, I then told him I'll get him a lawyer, but I couldn't, and he was upset about it. <laughs> so the nigga that was in the county charged up got an attitude with you who met him about 30 days ago because you couldn't afford to get him a probably a $20,000 homicide lawyer is about $20,000 right average $20,000 $25,000 hmm. entitlement he's an entitled thug <laughs> sounds familiar um I worked this case myself from the outside, and I got all the charges dropped. Damn. What the fuck is you, bitch, a witch? Hold on. <laughs> this took a turn. <laughs> bitch, did me back. You know, I got a couple questions about a situation a friend going through. I'm asking for a friend, DM me. Word. We got a couple questions. She a different type of rider. Should I take this shit to trial and plea out? Finish the message. I want to see what type of person is it. Show me this picture. You show me. <laughs> DM me a little bit. Um. Okay, I got all the charges dropped, but the second degree assault. He was shooting a lot of people. Second degree assaults, plural. And he received five and a half years to serve. So he he has one him. and a half years left on the sentence. He keeps bringing up the fact that he would have been home if I got him a lawyer. My question is, do you think it's unappreciative? And was I wrong for not giving him a lawyer? He hasn't told me or sold me any dreams. 
He loves me just as much as I love him, and I strongly feel that this is my person. Other men disgust me, and I love him so much. Should I wait on him or skate on him? You wrote me this at 3.20 in the morning. That's how I know you really meant it. I don't know if this is your first time dealing with a nigga in jail, but niggas in jail are really good at making you feel great. So when you say to me, all oh, other guys disgust me, but he don't, of course he wouldn't disgust you. He has 24 hours out the day to figure out what to say to your black ass. <laughs> and now these niggas got tablets. He could study. You go through your fucking Facebook for three days and know what you like to eat, what you like to drink. Love bombing is real. And before love bombing even came out, motherfuckers using that terminology, jail niggas was doing it. When I was in jail, I had four niggas. I had one nigga that would send me $200 a week. His name was Ramadan. I had another nigga that would come to the prison to come see me, Aileen. My other niggas did, I don't want to say his name, but he would ride up with the four wheeler boys outside when I flicked the light and made me feel fancy in front of all the other inmates. And then I had the one I thought was going to fuck me real good when I got out. Sometimes I would call him and he'd say, I'll call you right back. <laughs> but I really liked him Either way I had all them niggas And they all got the same script for me You know Out the four I came home and gave one some pussy You know what I mean Like it's like It's just how it is in jail You could be the lawyer girl mm, Damn Nigga had one b bitch that keep him with them Because it's the thing whether you read the mail or not, don't nothing make you feel better than your name being called that mail call, period. The only thing feel better than mail call is bad call when you get your motherfucking commissary. Right? I'm talking about, I would max out, you can only spend a certain amount of money on commissary a week. I would max out every week because I wanted the whole unit to see how big my bag was so these bitches know I get it a couple of dollars. That's jail. Mm -hmm. Building up on um, shit that they, it would be stuff, Right? But it was considered contraband. I had a whole bunch of that shit just to show these bitches what I could get. I got three pairs of sneakers. You don't allowed to get one. See, I'll catch it once a month, throw them away. I'm buying them again. It's all to show these motherfuckers what's going on. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's super common for a nigga to have the bitch that's in the mail, the bitch that's in the money, the bitch that might get it done on the phone, get nasty, make some noises, you know, play with the pussy, visit, jerk you off. The visit person, the motherfucker that make the moves for you outside. Your son's birthday is Tuesday, and he wake up to gifts outside the door because it's a bitch doing that for him. Mm -hmm. You know how many miscellaneous gifts I got through the years of my fight? It wasn't every year, but some of them bits, what I asked for Christmas from that nigga or what I asked for my birthday or whatever, I got just it. just show up at the door. Mariah, the scientist just said, sometimes <laughs> thug come home and say, open the door, and it'd be stuff all over the porch, and she'd be thinking, damn, how do you do this? Well, if you knew your man, you would know how he did it. You appreciated what you had. She might just be trying to protect him and not trying to add no more details to his life. The answer to your question <laughs> is, I think that... You know, you could try, you already put in all this work or whatever with the niggas. Admirable that you helped him get out of jail. So that's what's up. I think it's more than unappreciative that he didn't, um, that he even mentions the fact that you didn't pay for a lawyer. Where the fuck are you supposed to get that money from out of your, the crack of your fucking ass? Fuck that. And the next time he say it, shut it down so he'll never have the heart to say it again. Because, bitch, if he could say this shit on the phone now, imagine how he going to do when you home and y'all randomly walking to Target and he has some type of weird-ass flashback that you didn't pay $25,000 for a lawyer. You ain't owe that motherfucker nothing. You met him in two fucking days of him winking through the glass. You fell for this nigga. Girl, if I could tell you anything, I would say run. But if you don't want to do that, test the waters and look for them red flags. And the first time he fuck up, don't fuck with him again. Because number one, he's a fucking criminal. And girl, if we don't know nothing, we know he'll pop your motherfucking ass. That's one thing about Ricky. He'll shoot a motherfucker. Clearly. I got to go. They telling me I got to go. I got to leave. I ain't even want to go. I just have to leave. Word. You blowing my shot, bro. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. Get your fucking tickets if you want to see me. Don't wait. It's a great stock of stuffer for your bitch. These dates are perfect for you to get that bitch some motherfucking tickets. You ain't did nothing for that bitch all year. Buy the tickets for her to see her favorite bitch. 27th, right? 27th in Philly. 27th. The third in Boston. Third in Boston. And New York is the 29th. Let's fucking go. City Rinery. January, December. We're going to put it up there for y'all. Don't worry about it. 
January the 3rd, December the 29th, and December the 27th. You wasn't listening to all four. I said this my six times. No, but you ain't, you ain't saying them in order, nigga. That's a lie. That's a literal lie. Do a playback. Cut this shit off and play it back. I'm winning this argument. Cut it off and play it back. You just said December 29th last. You literally just said it. Yeah. Play it back. It's not going to win. <laughs> Let's bet. 27th in Philly. 27th. The third in Boston. Third in Boston. And New York is the 29th. Let's fucking go. City Rinery. You blowing my shot, bro. Better shot on it. Cut this off. Cut the cameras off. Cut the cameras off. Cut them off. Cut them off.